Hello and welcome, dear friends, YouTubers, etc. Uh, Sunyan here with a very cool program that is going to help you train your memory. And we're going to achieve this in probably less than 30 lines of Python code. And it's going to be neat and cool. And really, um, we're going to use a well-known memory technique of visualizing objects stacked one on top of another, interacting in some way. Um, so to do this, we're going to use a Python feature called lists. Um, it's like an array. It's essentially a list of words and there are cool commands that we can do with these um, lists and you can add words to it. As you can see, like I have a, a more or less stripped um, some, you know, short nouns of a year two learning site, but you can add anything of your own. Um, I've got microphone, speaker, I don't know. I can look in there and on my desk and just add some stuff. Picture. Um, phone. Dun, 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 dun. It doesn't matter how long your list is. The idea is we're going to pick 10 words at random in a specific sequence and then show them to you. Maybe three seconds each word or 10 seconds each word. And then you're going to have to try to repeat them back. So we have this list here. And in Python, we have these uh, libraries, which ha which give us awesome commands. Now, random is going to allow us to shuffle the lists. Time is going to um, make these delays. And sys, well, we were going to use sys to wipe the screen, but I decided against wiping the screen. So I'm just going to remove sys. So we're only going to use random and time. So let's um let's first test out how printing out say the first 10 um words in the list is going to look like so we're going to write a loop and the way we do that in python is for i in range i think 0 to 10 is going to give us 10 um i think it doesn't take 10 it starts 0 1 2 3 4 up to 9 so now this is going to be indented. So instead of having some kind of curly braces or anything around the loop, everything that's indented at this level goes in the loop. And in that loop, we can say print. And we can print word list, which is that list. And we can now square bracket I. Close it. So F5 is going to execute the program. Maybe it's going to work. I'm just going to call it mem guess. All right. Done. And if I wanted to do it with a delay of a second, I would just write time dot sleep. One, F5, and they're going to print one at a time. Excellent. So we can write a comment that says print out 10 words um but let's have a look if we can shuffle them and i think it's either word list dot shuffle or wait random dot sh no it's random dot shuffle word list so if we random dot shuffle and word list So I think this should be enough um, to achieve something interesting. All the words are going to come out completely differently. And most of these are not even going to be there. If it does, come on, F5, yep. Yeah, that's exactly it. Right, so every time we do this, we're going to have a different 10 words come out. The next challenge we're going to have is um, going to be the reality is if you're going to have to guess these words back, they're they're printed here for you. And, you know, the obvious solution would be to build some kind of graphical user interface, but that's really complex. Um, it'll take a lot of effort. So we're going to have to just figure out how to, I don't know, print spaces or, or um, 
something. Maybe I'm just gonna create a little function so we can play around with functions and we can call it space out. Space out. And in there, we could print, I don't know, 10 lines. So again, we'll just do another loop for, and we can, for i in range. Print, I don't know, maybe just print out a star. And if I add a space out before and after, all right, let's try that. That is namespace out is not defined, but that's how I wrote it. Well, maybe I need to define the function first and just put that right up there. Yeah, because it reads the code in a... Yeah. Okay, so now we're seeing everything. I think we just need to make the space out like 20, and that's going to work. The reason that didn't work was because um, it I told it to space out, but the space out was defined lower down. So it's probably better to define all your functions up top, even though that may make your code look a little bit confusing. Now let's have a look at how that works. But I wrote 20 spaces, surely. Ah, no, 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 no. I changed that to 20 words, sorry. Excellent, excellent. So in order to stop you from seeing the last word when you attempt your answers, maybe we'll just add another space out after that, after the loop, when the loop is all over. Um, space out, dun dun. All right, so we have successfully presented uh, 10 random words from a list, which is our first step. And the second step is we could check out our answers. So we can just say print now it's time to check your answers. Start with the first word, then hit enter. Okay, I think this is kind of clear enough. Um, by the way, I'm using double quotations and single quotations mixed up. I'm just too used to Arduino and it's double quotations, but they both work in Python, so that's actually not a problem. So right now we're going to do a loop that checks um, if your answer is the same as the previous, as the one that's already listed. So, again, for i in range 0, 10, we're using the same loop structure three times over. This is actually really good. And we can have a variable. Now, in Python, you don't have to declare variables. You just use them. And Python figures out that it's a string or an integer or a long or whatever it is. So your guess in this case is going to be the input 
of whatever you type in. And then we're going to say if that guess of yours, that the word you put in is the same as the first word on the list, which is word list I. Then we can just say correct. Print. Correct. Okay, so this should this should test it out. Maybe I can say else. Nope. Oh, and we can even add, like, you can concatenate strings really easily, which means add stuff to the strings in the same print line. Check this out. The answer is space, and then you can just go plus word list i. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, let's have a look if this works. Okay, whole carpet cake. I'll just have to remember the first three, and then I'll be tested. I mean, this is... we got to give us a lot more time. The standard is you start off with 10 and eventually you work down to 6 seconds. But I remember it was whole car pet time, maybe? I don't know. Cake. Hmm. Now, I don't know any of these, but... Excellent. So the reason why I wanted to add this is because it, it helps um, to know what the answer was because you can visualize all of these to be linked. Now, all I need to do is add a score to this. You realize I don't see the very last word and we have a working program. So How do we know? Well, did we have 10 words? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's perfect. So we need like a global variable. Score equals to 0. And now, if it's correct, we're going to go score equals to score plus one. But in the loop, we have to declare that we're using the global score. We haven't invented a brand new score. So this i, this i, and that i are all local to the loop in which they are. Like, they don't. They're completely different things. I, I could have named them differently and it would have functioned exactly the same way. But this score here is the score that's set at the beginning of the program to zero there. So when the program is over in its last line, we can just say print and say your score is, we need a space. And then we can go plus now because score is a variable i think i'm just gonna have to convert it to string string score sorry it's an integer it's gonna be you know it starts off at zero so we're gonna have like seven out of ten or whatever and then we can add another string and i can say out of ten so wheat okay i'm I'm going to actually try to use this as a proper memory testing program. I'm just going to give myself eight seconds. So this whole thing is going to take 80 seconds, and we'll see how well I do. And I hope the program works. I'm actually reasonably confident that it will. All right, let's have a go at this. So I'm visualizing a computer, big white one. Hole. I'm visualizing the computer opening up into a whole way.
map on top of the hole. All right, tough, tough computer hole map bun cub can phone men. So I visualized basically a phone on top of the can with men sort of dancing on top of the phone and they're holding my dad who's holding a carpet and that's that score is 10 out of 10. So you can Google for some memory exercises, but it, it, this is effectively a visualization technique. And if you can memorize arbitrary words connecting, you can have uh, um, you know objects that hold a lot of symbolism for you and give you hints to remember other stuff. Now, memory is essentially something that that has long sort of chains connected to a single trigger. So not that you could memorize entire books this way although some people claim to be able to do that um, but you can certainly give your mind a lot of hints which can help you remember stuff you'd normally forget okay I hope you had fun with it in the near future I'm gonna cover an advanced version of this program with a graphical user interface that I am working on at the moment take care y'all